Mini Wargamer Dave here from MiniWargaming.com. Welcome, Wargamers, to an update of my Blood Angel army. Behind me, you see 3,600 points of painted Blood Angels. Now, Paul was nice enough to allow me to borrow some of his models just so I could uh, have a more well rounded army in my battles against people. But the majority of the models that you see back there are mine. Uh, the cool ones are his because he's a much better painter than I am, but uh, yeah, now, let me just show you what's going on here. Okay, so you're used to seeing the uh, assault marines there. This ten squad of ten there is Paul's. All those models that are painted on the left there are Paul's. Um, that Predator is Paul's. That Storm Raven is Paul's. The Dreadnoughts, three of them are Paul's, except for the one in the back left, which was painted by Joe. He incidentally magnetized it as well. And, uh, well, come to think of it, it doesn't actually look like I have a lot painted. But I have a big army, nonetheless, that I have access to. So, okay, that's just gone to crap. Let's start with the Assault Terminators. They are equipped with Lightning Claws. I have them equipped that way specifically because I like the extra attacks and the re-rolling failed wound rolls. I think that's pretty devastating, especially when they come out of a land raider, which you see there in the back. That's a pretty dev devastating force, especially if they're equipped, or not equipped, but if they have a sanguinary priest and a chaplain in the same squad. That makes it even more devastating, because you get the furious charge and feel no pain, from the priest, and you get to re-roll your failed two hit rolls with the chaplain when you charge. So that is a pretty devastating force, I must say. Uh, let's go on to the assault marines. Wow, that looks really cool from this angle. 40 assault marines. Take a look at that. That's awesome. Can you imagine looking at 40 assault marines just coming at you on the board? It really does look like drops of blood. That would be terrifying. But since it's me, I don't think it's terrifying. I think it's funny. Let's go on to the tanks. We have Predators. That one in the bottom left is Falls. But the other three Predator tanks are mine. Regular Heavy Support Predators. Equipped with Heavy Bolters on the sides and their Auto Cannons up top. Then we have three... Razorbacks, Razorbacks slash Rhinos, whatever, whatever they want to be. And Storm Raven, that's Paul's. I have yet to actually feel that in a game, but we will see in the future. And let's take a look at the HQ over here. Oh, the Sanguinary, Sanguinary Sanguinor. I meant to say Sanguinor, but I was looking at the Sanguinary guard behind him and I got mixed up. This is a ridiculously awesomely painted model by Paul. I could not paint this. That's why I am using his, because it looks beautiful. This is actually a beautiful model. It is ridiculously painted. It doesn't look as good in the video as it does in person, if you can believe it. Even Mephiston thinks he's beautiful. Let me just look at it. it looks like he's ascending into the sky and he's gonna fly down with his sword of justice and his chalice of mercy I just made that up on the spot I don't really think that's what that means other two HQ right behind Astarath and Dante sneeze coming up in five seconds Corbulo right behind him and a chaplain behind him and then we have the five sanguinary guard I have yet to feel them in battle I actually want to see how they do, but they're quite expensive, and so to field them in a 1500 point game or less is is a, a little bit tricky. It's funny I say that because I recently played a game with Matt where it was 1500 points and I fielded the Sanguinor. He's 275 points. I mean, that's just a stupid amount of points, period, let alone to put in a 1500 point game. But I, it was Paul, he just left it on my desk. Uh, to play with, and uh, I just had to field it. So I fielded it. 
Now, I don't think that the game I played against Matt was truly indicative of his abilities, because he got stuck with the Mind Shackle Scarabs that the uh, Necron Lords had in Matt's Necron army, so essentially he slowly whittled himself down the whole game. That was my experience with the Sanguinor so far. I have learned that one experience of any model isn't an accurate representation of their abilities. For example, the very first time I fielded Deffy, he sucked. He got penetrated, he blew up, he sucked. Didn't do anything. I thought, why the heck would I ever field him again? 150 points of uselessness. Don't worry, I didn't mean to say that. You've heard this before, just need to live with it. The second game that I played with Deffy, same thing happened. He managed to fire one or two of his battle cannon shots, but he still got penetrated. Third game, he demolished the enemy so bad, he more than made up for the past two crappy games. I thought, wow, this is the best model ever created in the Warhammer 40k universe. That was my thought process. And so I thought, hmm, this is interesting. He either sucks or he's incredibly awesome. Maybe I'll field him more to get a better uh, gauge, a better average, if you will. So on average, he uh, does incredibly well. He kills more than his points value. That's what he should do. That's what I hope for him. Mephiston definitely does that. And if he doesn't do it, he just makes models die on the battlefield due to his uh, scariness, because for some reason people are scared of him. I don't know why. Maybe it's the possibility of strength 10, force weapon. That probably has something to do with it. And he's got, like, stupid stats, too. But Sanguinor, he's actually more expensive than Mephiston. That's surprising to me, because he has incredible stats. But he has an invulnerable save, which Mephiston does not. And it's a low invulnerable save. So, all good. Now, I'm waiting on some death company from Worthy Painting. And so, I will wait to field Astarath before they come in. Because I'm going to get a lot of them. Um, I think I'm going to get 30 or something like that. Like, there's going to be like a dumb amount of death company that I'll add to this army. Along with the death company, I'm going to get a bunch of more dreadnoughts. Death Company Dreadnoughts. And so, I think that would be a cool Blood Angels army. That would be different. Different than what I have right now. It's going to be black and red. That'll be a good Blood Angel color. Get a lot of Dreadnoughts, a lot of Death Company, Assault Marines as well, Astarath, see how he does on the battlefield. I'll probably also field the Fiston. And I'll probably do more than a 2,000 point game with that because that's just too good to pass up. Now, take a look at this. This is my project for over the holidays. I have three Bale Predators on the bottom. They are going to be assembled. They are going to be added to that roster of tanks for just pure awesomeness purposes because we want to have a lot of mechanized abilities as Blood Angels. Drop Pods up top. I want my Dreadnoughts falling from the sky in Drop Pods. I've never actually fielded drop pods before. Let's see how the strategy works. And forget strategy, it just it'll look cool. If there's a bunch of drop pods dropping from the sky with Furiosos and whatever other kind of dreadnoughts popping out of them. I think that'll be awesome. So we have this to look forward to right now. What you're looking at right there is 3,600 points of Blood Angels. Some of that is not mine. The majority of it is mine. The parts that are painted better of that are Paul's. The parts that are painted tabletop standard, I guess that's a relative term, are mine. That's what we have. Just taking a second to look at it and take it in. That's my army update. So thanks for watching, and please like this video if... Uh, you enjoy watching Blood Angels sit on desks and just model their awesomeness. And we'll see you in the next video.